Hello guys, Sako here. Uh, in this video tutorial, we're going to build an infinite scroll on uh, Webflow. Uh, this is a very cool interaction and it's not native in Webflow, so we have to use some sort of a JavaScript plugin to enable us. So what I have here is a regular CMS collection page that just populated some CMS items like blog posts, for example, right? And instead of having this paginate, uh, it's going to go through, it will basically load infinitely as the user scrolls down. As you can see, all the CMS items are being loaded as I scroll the way down. And then I have this message once I reach the end, it has no more items to show. Now, this uh, isn't done natively in Webflow, uh, but uh, it, there is a plugin that does this very simply and which I discovered actually from this blog post on Webflow uh, by Jack and Wiki who have done the similar thing and they've already provided a, a script that is already adapted to Webflow and we just need to paste this script and that's it in reality. There is not a lot of um, adjustment to, uh, that needs to be done. The plugin itself is this. Um, you can check it out and there is one extra uh, option that we're going to do aside from the script that I'm going to demonstrate. So let's build this out in Webflow. And um, so I have a page here, pretty standard stuff here, nothing special uh, about this arrangement. So first we're going to drop obviously our collection list, right? And then we're going to connect this collection list to a uh, CMS, in this case photos, that's what my CMS, CMS is called. And uh, inside co the collection item, I'm going to drop a, uh, let's say, so this is going to be a block card. So I'm going to drop a link block. Why link block? Because you need to connect this to the page itself, right? So for example, if it's a blog, blog posts, uh, then you need to do, if you are uploading, for example, just like an image gallery, then you don't need to write, uh, connect, connect it to the specific CMS item. But uh, when you are doing a blog post or you want to connect to that CMS uh, item then you need to have a link block and this will give you this purple page here and then now you're able to uh, select it says current photo in your case it will say current whatever the CMS is current blog post current author whatever current photo so now that's connected so the link will connect there and inside this link block that I'm going then I'm going to drop everything that we need which is well, I'll need an image, I'll need a heading and a paragraph. All right. As you can see, it's already populating. Now we're going to connect each individual, select with thumbnail photo. There you go, way too big. I will fix that. And this will be connected to the heading. Well, in our case, it's a name. All right, that's good. And this actually, I don't have a field for this. So I'm just going to leave this as static because I didn't create a field for my paragraphs. So we're just gonna leave this static, but that's all right. So I'm not going to do styling because um, assuming you already know that. So I already have um, my classes here so i'll just apply to them so we can quickly get to the through this tutorial because i'm pretty sure you'll know most of this stuff and um is this heading nope heading six nope well, maybe i don't have a class for this so one thing you need to do when you are dealing with uh, the grid uh, to create this layout, you will going to create this layout using Flexbox. And when we do the Flexbox, we need to give this collection item a 33% width because that's going to split them in three. So what we need to do is we need to take the collection list and I already have the classes, so I'm going to apply it, collection list class and it already has the default flex box, direction horizontal, which is default, and one extra thing that you have to apply, which is wrap. If you don't have, uh, apply wrap, it's not gonna work. 
and I'll show you why it's not going to work. And here I already have another one, which is collection item. And uh, it right away arranged everything correctly. Why? Because this collection item already has a 33% width to it. If you apply this to be 25%, that will split in five. If you make it 50%, that will make it two column layout. You get the gist. I do 100 divided by three, a little math, and it does it the calculation on its own and some padding and margin on the bottom. So what else uh, we have here? We just need to maybe get rid of too much text here. And uh, perhaps give this guy some color. So we have everything set up. The, um, now what we need to do, everything is being loaded right now, right? So all the CMS items that I have, have have been loaded on this. We don't want that. We want to limit it. Otherwise, what's the point of that scroll, right? Uh, then it's everything is being loaded and it's uh, just going to make the page very, very uh, long, even if the user didn't ask for it, right? Uh, so you need to limit the items by, well, actually not limit items. We're going to paginate items. This is the important part. Uh, we are paginating. We, when you limit items, there is no way to get every, anything else out of it. But when we paginate it, then we get the page um, uh, uh, pagination button. So we are able to go to a different page. And that's what this uh, uh, infinite scroll is going to pull. Uh, he's going to access the next page and bring all those cards from that next page and uh, perhaps limit this to maybe nine. About six. Let's do nine. So we'll do nine. That's all good. And uh, sometimes you're going to get this weird things. So I haven't changed the size. There you go. That's better. What else is left there? So I believe that's all we need. Now we need to grab the code. And I will explain the code. And if you need to make any adjustments to the code, I will link all the, the blog posts so you can copy the code there as well. So if you are installing uh, this uh, on every single page on your website, then you're going to need to paste the code in, uh, uh, in the page set, in the project settings from here. But I doubt you're doing that. So you should only install this on a specific page where you're going to have that infinite scroll. So you are not going to, um, uh, so you don't overload your uh, website needlessly on different pages. I already have it here, something. So I'm just going to delete and uh, paste it right here. Uh, the instructions say to apply this inside the head. So that's where you're going to need to put this. Um, and now let's see, there's two things to, uh, one item three, yes. Yeah, so three different values that need to, we need to pay attention to here. So we have a class here called collection list, and this is important. This is how this uh, plugin is going to select our container where we have all the cards inside. The, then there's this path, which is another class. You don't have to edit this. This is default by Webflow. Webflow applies this class to that uh, next button. So you're not going to need to adjust this. And then we have another one, which is collection item. And collection items are these guys. So if you, for some reason, uh, have different classes here, so if you're not using collection item, which is what by default Webflow applies to it, and for example, you change this and you have this my collection item. Now you're going to need to adjust that code. All right. So you're going to have to go here and you're going to call this my uh, spaces in CSS have to be filled with dashes. So yes, in Webflow, we're being shown the space here, but in reality, Webflow then translates this into uh, this sort of class. My collection item looks correct. 
Same thing with a collection list. If you're not going to, uh, where is that? If you're not gonna name this exactly like this, then you have to adjust um, uh, the code as well. Or do the vice versa, right? You already have this, just change the class name here. So we're gonna publish this and see how it's working so far. This is now a different page. So let's see. There you go, it's loading quite well. So it's loading, as you can see, we can test it again. And now it, uh, pay attention to the URL. As I scroll to a different page, and I pause, uh, the URL updates and shows me that I'm on a different page. So that's pretty cool. And now we know that we are moving through different pages of our collection item. So a few things here, which is we don't have that, um, we don't have that, uh, animation that I have in my original one uh, and we don't have a uh, text that's going to show no items uh, that you have reached the end and it's a good thing to show to the user so they don't think that oh you know something is not working and they are trying to refresh that it's not loading more it's a good idea to show them that that's it you know we don't have more posts and uh, this is not uh, described in this blog post and we have to, but I was uh, looking around the options of this uh, plugin and found actually an option to do that. And I will show you how to do that option right now. So in, they had this option. If you are, if you know JavaScript a little bit, uh, you might want to also see different options and you'll get a bit better understanding of what you can uh, change and customize it to your needs. Uh, so there is this uh, thing called status, and if we apply this um, this uh, code within our options of the code, you'll see the code has this place where you have the options. So these are the options from the plugin. So any new option you need to add, it has the space where you're able to add more. So you can paste it here, um, make sure to add a comma here because when you're going to add more of those uh, you're gonna need to have a comma here and um, now this is going to enable a page load status so the plugin will look for the class that has page load status and uh, use that to show different statuses so we'll save that here and then it tells us three different um, uh, status options uh, which is on request. This is basically the loading. Then there is the last and then there is an error. I'm not using error. I haven't used an error. You can use the error as well. So which means now we have to create three more uh, classes and give them this exact names. The way we can do this is by at the end of our container outside of our collection wrapper, I uh, will add a new do block. And in this div block, I'm going to add the same class, which was page load status. This is a parent, so we are applying this to the parent, page load status. I already have this, so I'm just going to select page load status, exactly like this. It's okay if you do it with spaces, or it's okay if, we, if you apply with dashes, it's the same. Inside that, I'm going to drop um, a text block, which is going to be our last infinite scroll last so we need to apply that class which i already have infinite scroll last as you can see in this case i actually copy paste it from the website that's why i have the dashes but they are the same if you do it dashes without dashes it will work exactly the same at the end because webflow does the translation and here i'm going to say uh, the end and we need one more and you're always dropping this make sure that you're nesting them inside this page load status class you cannot put it elsewhere otherwise it's not going to find it and um, in my case actually you can put anything here whatever you're going to put uh, inside this uh, it will basically hide or show that that's it so which means that we can put an image inside and uh, what you can do is you can put this image to be a GIF, 
that I send animation or an SVG. SVG works as well. So what I've done was I googled like uh, loading dots SVG and you know found many of them and I think I grabbed one from here. I believe uh, there is a download and I this is what I grabbed and uh, I got that SVG file which I'm going to choose. It's right here. It works right away because it's SVG, it's kind of like GIF, uh, it animates right away. And now I'm going to apply that class to this image, which is scroll request. So request is this loading that happens. Um, I already have that class. So there you go. It's already styled. I think I have that opacity decreased here. That's why it's a bit more faded. I can increase the opacity. Right, and um, I guess it would make sense that this comes first, like this. And another thing, we don't need, need the pagination anymore. So just change the pagination's uh, visibility to hidden. And now publish again. And let's give it a go. There you go, it's loading. You can even shrink the size and we reach the end. Now it tells us the end and that's it. Uh, just one more, uh, I haven't fixed the, yes, I, I know that the images are a bit squished down, but uh, that's because I haven't uh, applied the correct fitting and cover to the image. That's why they're squishing or um, actually I noticed uh, one thing that if this, uh, I'm not sure if this, this is with Webflow or not, but uh, on my original solution, I actually applied the image as a background. So I just put the div block and put that as a background, which you can do like this, get background image from, and then it's gonna give you the option to get it from the CMS. And the reason why I did was for some reason, uh, the fitting, which is usually right here, object fit, uh, for the image where you can change the cover so they're not squashed down wasn't working on the when I was using this plugin and uh, that's why I decided and I used the um, image as a background and then it was working fine and when you do this image as a background then you have to apply so what you have to do is um, you have to add a background image so you can style how you want to position it and you select it in the center, select it as a cover, so that way it's just going to fill up and uh, style image properly. So uh, this is it. If you have any questions, post in the comments and I'll try to help you out.